Hi there, friends. Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. Happy Sunday, everyone. And in honor of Plain Air April, in today's video, we are putting together two travel kits to go inside one large travel bag. You can use it to paint outside, on the go, do plain air painting, or simply enjoy just because you can. So, what is plain air painting? Plain air is a French expression meaning in the open air and refers to the act of painting outdoors with the artist's subject in full view. Plain air artists capture the spirit and essence of a landscape or subject by incorporating natural light, color, and movement into their work. Also known as the act of painting outside, Plain air painting came to prominence in the 18th century when paint makers began to manufacture tubes of oil paint. This facilitated a greater ease in taking painting gear outdoors in order to capture the ever-changing light across the landscape. Here on the desk, I have a variety of items that one may want to consider when putting together a travel kit for painting on the go, slash outside, slash paint plain air painting. Now, we are going to be putting together two different little travel kits that I will be using over the month of April, throughout May, and throughout the summer for painting outside, for plain air painting, or for whenever I happen to be traveling. But before we do that, I think it's important that we take a look at about seven tips that are going to help us kind of pull all of this together and give us an idea of the things we would like to, we may want to use or we may want to look for when it comes to plain air paint. From windsorandnewton.com, here are seven tips to help make your plain air painting experience more enjoyable. One, travel light and get creative with your choice of materials. Number two, Simplify your palettes, friends. Number three, use found water. Number four, collect and use found items. Number five, one of my personal favorites, use your smartphone to capture a visual reference. Number six, use easily portable cases to transport supplies. And number seven, don't wear sunglasses while painting, friends. So with those tips in mind, I am going to be putting together two travel kits to put inside my travel bag. My travel bag will go with me whenever I'm traveling, going on vacation, extended stays at different places. The travel kits will, ser will serve the purpose of local painting. I will just reach into the travel bag and grab whichever one of the kits I want to paint with that day. So that's the thought process behind my travel bag system. Now, you guys do it however you want. You can put together just one bag. You don't have to be putting together two kits for one bag the way I am. Uh, maybe I'm a little excessive in that manner, but you guys can definitely condense it down much, 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 much more. Um, so I'm going to start with the brushes, and I'm just going to show you a couple of different ideas that um, I've come up with to put into each of the kits. Now I am using canvas bags for my little kits. Use whatever you may have. You may use um, little bags. Um, there's these little pencil holders of such like this that you can use. There are many different things you can use to make your little travel kit. So kind of look around, see what you have that's spacious enough to hold a few different items. Okay, um, now for the brushes, one of them I'm going to actually be using a travel brush. This is an actual paint crush product. This is the Joy Chaser. It is a number six round. The thought process behind this is to have one brush that is really versatile and will do everything that I need it to do. I happen to like this brush a lot. 
and it comes to a really, really fine point. So it will help me with doing detail work. That is going to be going into one of the kits. Now, you don't necessarily have to have that brush, but any travel brush, any short handle brush that you can protect and put in your kit, you want to think short, seriously. You want to think smaller, not long handle brushes. I don't think, now, maybe depending on the medium you're using, like maybe if you're doing oils, you may be transporting in much bigger kit carriers or maybe easels or or if you're doing like oil pastels. So in that case, I can definitely understand having, because you have so much area to carry with, being able to take many more things of a larger size, like long handle brushes. So, but for watercolor, it would be my suggestion to maybe try to keep it small, um, short handle brushes, travel brushes, water brushes, like um, this, in this particular kit, I have a um, water brush, a number one cat's tongue, a number two round, and a, num and a half inch dagger. And those fit right inside this little brush case. This was a Maya Hemi detail brush case. And I just took the brushes out because I put them in the cup on my desk. I use them on a regular basis. And I'm using that. So just kind of look around. See if you can find something that's going to be small and compact that will definitely protect the bristles of your brush. That's the idea there. So let's move on to paper. Now with your paper choice you're not gonna be able to fit it inside a kit this size unless you have a really small pad or book. It really depends on how big you want to paint when you're outside. So I have a couple of options here that you may wanna consider. And it's really not about the paper brand. It's really about the paper size. Some of these I can actually fit into the travel bag some of these I can fit into the little kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Either way, I can put them into what I'm using. They're small enough to fit into what I'm using as an overall travel system. So let's start actually with some things that you could actually find online if you were interested. And again, we're really just talking about the size. You can go look for whatever brand you want, or you may already have many different sketchbooks that are about this size or small enough that you can use to fit into a travel kit. Now, this particular one, I do believe is five and a half by five and a half. Um, I forget what brand this is. I think this is Reflections. Yeah, this is Reflections. This is, I got this at Jerry's. And this one is, oh, five and a half by five and a half. So, you know, something that size would be really nice to paint on. Let me show you, you know, so you can get a general idea about a page. Okay, that one's blank. <laughs> so you can get a general idea about a page size there. All right. Um, let's see. Then there is something of this size. This would be small enough to fit into a little travel bag, depending on the size you're carrying. Um, maybe you're carrying a backpack on a hike or something of that nature. So I thought that this would be a nice size for something like that. This is, oh, seven by five and a half, seven by five and a half, something. And, and it's a, I like this square size. I think it would be nice for landscape paintings, but I could still flip it, portraits, and you know, do something nice in a cropped sense. So I think that's a really nice size sketchbook, um, that seven by five and a half. Now this one is more on the um, seven and a half by six, five by seven general area. Let me see, this one is yeah, seven and a half by five and a half. So it's almost the same. It's just a paper pad. So it's bound. Or this was actually a block. I'm sorry. I picked this one because it was a block recommendation. So it's a perfect size, I think, for traveling. Um, especially fitting into like a purse or a backpack or a regular traveling bag. Um, 
and it's a block so you won't have to have like masking tape to tape any of the paper down so that may be a choice you want to consider this is a watercolor pad so you know i've always thought about you know with a watercolor pad you get one that's got this kind of nice size to it this paper is eight by five and a half it looks it's really like five and three quarters if the truth be told it's a five i know what the measurements what they're shooting for um but i've always thought you like pull a couple pieces of the paper off the pad and put it into like a ziploc bag um and use it to travel with that would be a great way to protect the paper not have to take the entire pad now in that case you would have to have like masking tape and something to tape it down to not unless you're one of those painters who wet both sides of your paper but i'm not sure how that would work outside so maybe you would want to just take the pad and put it in a ziploc bag to help protect the paper you know here are some handmade choices you know i'm going to be kind of utilizing i'm definitely going to put this one in the travel bag because this is my dessert journal and i'm almost done doing one side so that i can flip it to do the other side um and kind of get it to completion i'm not sure when i might be sitting in a restaurant or at my mom's or uh, aunt's house because they cook desserts galore or here even at my own house if the truth be told um, here is one that's the same size, and these journals are six by five, five and a quarter, six by five and a quarter. Um, both of them are the same size, because I remember cutting a pattern for both of them from the same template. And this one I made in a video, so I'll link it just in case you guys want to see how to make an accordion journal. Um, so those are nice sizes. And then this one is actually small enough, I think, to fit into one of the kids. It is. Okay. This is another one. This is an accordion style journal as well. It's just made portrait and it's wrapped with a book cover. But, um, this one is, let's see. Five and a half by eight five and a half about three and a half and i think it's so nice landscape size see let me see i think i have a landscape in here here we go just look at that that i mean that was just me playing around but you see that that's perfect size i think for like outdoor playing there that's just my thought process though so i'm actually going to put that one in with the travel brush set I'm going to go ahead and just pop that in there, push it to the side. And those are some ideas that I thought I would share with you that you may want to consider for paper choices in your travel bag. As I said, I'm going to be putting both of those accordion journals in, in my paper, in my travel bag. And I'm going to show you guys everything at the very end that's going to go in the bag. I'm going to stick it over in there and I'll be sure to include pictures of what the bag looks like with all of the little travel accessories in it. So now let's move on to talking about paints. Now, this particular category is big, guys. We're going to go through this a little bit at a time. But the object is to show you different things you can use that are compact enough to be used as, you know, like your medium. Now, you use whichever medium you use. If you use oil pastels, if you use acrylic, if you use oils, of course, those are the things that you're going to pack. All of my choices are going to be water soluble because you guys know I'm water soluble leaning. So that's, these are the choices that I'm going to be showing you options that you can you know, kind of pick from. So let's start with things of this nature. <clears throat> so for a palette, you can use an Altoid tin, a peppermint tin, a candy tin. Um, the dollar store has the little puzzle tins. It comes with the little kid puzzles. You can just pull the puzzles out. Now this one, um, I do believe had peppermints. This was a peppermint tin. It was sent to me by a good artist friend of mine. Um, I'm just going to use some white acrylic paint to paint, repaint the inside of it. Um, maybe put down 
lamination pouch cut out here. Um, yeah, that can be repurposed. So you want to look for something that's small like this. And this is oh um, three and a half by two. Three and a half by two. So you know it's it's very, very, very small. You can also consider something of this nature. Now, there was a Timu palette, <clears throat> excuse me, the DDD Praise, if I'm not mistaken, those 12 half, but you can fit at least 12 half pans in here. Um, and although it's not exactly white, maybe you can sit it on a white piece of paper and maybe use that lid to mix in. So you wanna look for things of this nature that are small like this. This is four and a quarter by two, four and a quarter by two. So it's long enough to get 12 half pins in. So that's a really good size. Uh, you may want to consider something like this. This is an actual little travel system. This is a flip kit. Now this one is branded Royal and Lane Nipple, but it's white labeled by Superior Paints. You can find it um, in many different brands, but I happened to be in Walmart one day and found this Royal and Lane Nipple branded one. And Walmart picked it up for, I think at the time it was around $10, $11 maybe. Um, not, no more than 15. It's been a minute ago. But you can always consider something like that. And that one already has a water brush that comes in it. So that helps eliminate one of the things that you have to pet. So you definitely could consider something like that. I think, and I love that paint. Um, again, most of them are superior white labeled. So it's a really decent student grade paint in those kits. Um, you may want to consider something like if you are a gouache painter, you may want to consider something like this. Now, this one could be used for like gouache or acrylic. So basically, it is a palette. It's a stay wet palette. And I showed you this guy. I showed you guys this in the um, uh, Karen Dosh gouache, Studio Gouache Unboxing. So it's a stay wet palette. And as you can see, those paints are still wet. There's a gouache. They've been in there for weeks two weeks or more now so they have stayed pretty wet in there i really like this palette so that'll be something nice you can use any medium in there i think you can even put oil in there if i'm not mistaken so and it'll stay wet i really like this palette it clamps down it has the water cup so you already have your water cup with you as well so this may be something you want to consider. This is on Amazon. Um, I'll, I'll link it. It wasn't my, you know, the purpose behind this video wasn't to really have to link a bunch of products, but I guess now that I'm thinking about it, it would probably be beneficial in case anybody wants any of this. So I will link it. <clears throat> now, before we get into these three, let's talk about some other types of water soluble mediums that could be used um, well, first let's look at this. Now this is a Durant Graphitint paint palette. It's really about the size, but I also thought that the Graphitint paint set would be something really different to do plain air painting with, especially due to the fact that the colors are, um, they have that graphite sheen to it. Um, they're muted and beautiful all at the same time. I think they lend really well to like landscape painting seascapes things of that nature so i think that's something that could really be considered if you have that set um if not then just something of that palette size would be small enough to fit into let me show you guys it'll be small enough to fit into a kit of this size or even a travel bag backpack um purse you know so it fits in there really, really well. So that may be something you want to consider. Now let's look at a few things that are a little outside the box of a paint palette per se. Um, you may want to consider taking something like crayons if you're a water soluble painter. If you like watercolor crayons, um, this is the Karen Dosh 
is 15 in here. <clears throat> you don't need any more than 15 because you can mix those colors together to make um, pretty much whatever color you need to. This is a 12 count set by Sergeant Art, which I believe these are a Mongolia white label, but I was really thoroughly surprised at how well these dissolve in water and how pretty and bright the colors were. So if you um, wanted, you know, a more controlled thing that you didn't necessarily need, like, you know, something different than, than paint, that's something you could consider. Maybe a watercolor pencil set instead of paint, right? Maybe you're a watercolor pencil artist, uh, or maybe you are a watercolor paint artist that, you know, likes to dabble in watercolor pencils. Then why not take a pencil set? Now, this is 24 pencils by Suzanne. Suzanne is a house brand for Jerry's. Um, really nice set of pencils. Really economical, really budget-friendly. All of these products that I'm showing you are really budget friendly. I don't think I've shown you anything as of yet that was over 20 bucks. I don't think. Okay. You may want to consider something like, you know, fountain pens. These are water soluble fountain pens. They have a water soluble dye base ink in them and you can put them down and spread the ink around with water. And this serves many two folds cause you can draw with it as well. So you can draw with this medium as well as add water to it to spread it around. Now you wanna talk about compact for traveling. There's an idea for you and you can do all of your painting. You can mix the colors together. Um, so I think this is a really neat idea if you have fountain pens or if you're into fountain pens. Um, and they will fit directly inside a bag with no issue. Now see, I have that brush sitting there. I'm gonna throw those fountain pens in, maybe a um, black waterproof pen, right? Maybe a pencil, you know, just because. And something like this, which is water. Bam, there you go. You know, or maybe not even something like or you can put the water from here in the water brush and just use the water brush when you're using these. <clears throat> so really, 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 really compact. Look. So these are just different ideas you may want to consider for your travel kits. Um, I'm going to complete these and show you what's going to be in them. You may want to consider something like brush pens, real brush pens. Now this is almost the same idea as like the fountain pens, but instead, it's a real brush pen. This is colored. These are refillable brush pens. I'm not sure if you can find these anymore, this particular brand, but um, there are other brands on the market, and they're pretty affordable. They're not, that, they're not that bad at all on price, but that's a great way to paint on the go without taking a paint palette. Just ideas to consider. Just ideas to consider. Now, these last three are sort of like travel palettes in themselves. So here's one. I mean, we're all used to this one. It's just a regular 12 half pan standard size palette. I mean, it's compact. It'll, it's gonna fit inside a travel kit or a travel bag. Um, you can get some br a water brush down the middle of there if you want to just throw a brush in there and not maybe put any more in the kit. So. They do make brushes small enough to fit in areas like that. Um, and this happens to be Christy, uh, should I say Paint Crushes Anemones palette. Um, but any, you know, 12 half pan palette will do. Here I have Windsor and Newton little travel system. Now something like this comes with, this is so neat. This is a water cup here on top, right? And then you open the palette and you have on the inside, a little brush to paint with. Isn't it cute? I don't know how good it is. And I'd be scared to put it, take it in and out too much because you'll definitely damage the brush. It seems like it comes with the little canteen. Is that what this is? In it? 
It comes with it so that you can carry your water, pour your water in there to rinse with. Isn't that cool? This, I love this little thing. Um, sorry if it's in the camera shake rooms. And then the palette goes out so you have more than enough area to paint on here. And then in here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14, I think I counted 14 half hands. So it's really cool, really, really cool. A lot of paint and a very, very small surface area. And then you, once you empty your water out of here from rinsing, you just fit it back on top and you're ready to go. And that definitely fits, like, look at that. Love that. And you don't have to take any extra water because the water is already inside that. So this is probably going in to one of these bags. I actually shot a video last year where I put this together in that video. And I'm not sure I may include a clip of it in this video. No, I'm not going to put you guys through watching that because it's probably long enough at this point. So, um... But this is a mixture of Windsor and Newton professional paint sticks mixed with Windsor and Newton cotton. So I am gonna go ahead and stick that inside this bag because it is meant to go in there. Next up, last but not least, an option you may wanna consider is something like this. Now this is brand new to me. This was a gift. It is something that I have been craving for a very long time. It has been in and out of my Amazon cart countless times, kind of waiting on it to go on sale. And then I think it went on sale one time and I didn't have the funds to really just release at that particular point to go ahead and get it. Um, this is the portable painter. I have seen so many great things about this. It is such a versatile thing. Now, this is not an unboxing for this, so I'm not going to go through all of these things. I'm going to read them. And I think I will eventually get around to maybe doing a, a review of this because it is absolutely... Wait a minute. Is all of this in here? Classic. No. Okay. I don't think it is. Maybe, wait. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what's in here. How about that? Let's open it up. Okay. It looks like some extra pans. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. I love it. Oh, and then this has three water brushes in it. So there you go. Okay, so I already know that this works like from watching it. You pull this off and then these come off. And these are your water buckets, right? One for rinsing, one for um, clean water. And then they're gonna hook to the palette. Let me see if I can do this. And keep in mind, it's my first time, so don't y'all make, don't y'all laugh at me. Like this, maybe. Um, no, that's definitely not how they go. Okay, I figured it out in a second. And it opens up. Oh, cool. And it's already got half pans in it. Oh, so you're making use those half pans somewhere else and put paint directly in the well. Now, I'm gonna be putting Mission Gold. I'm gonna be putting my Mission Gold. This is the Pure Pigment set. Um, now, you guys have seen me review the 36 count set before, but I had the Pure Pigment set and I haven't used it. And I am gonna be doing a comparison video um, between the two sets. And I'm going to be putting the pure pigment set into my um, portable painter off camera, letting it dry the, down. And then the portable painter is going to be going into one of these canvas bags for the travel kit. Now, the thing is, it comes with its own bag. So maybe I'll just do three kits. Hmm. I don't know. But I'm fascinated with this. Now, let me, let me see. Just read the instructions again. How do, there are so many other versions of it. It looks really nice. It looks really nice. I think it's so cool. I'm trying to, maybe it's here, find the 
thing that shows me how to put it on. Ew, okay. Like this. So they slide in the place like so. This is so cool. This is absolutely so cool, man. And it sits up like that and you have both, both, oh, yes, clean water to rinse in. And you have all of this mixing area. So I think that this is really cool. That's really cool. I, I'm very appreciative of this gift. I really am. Okay, so there is another idea for something you can use as a travel palette. And as you know, this one is, in, in, in all honesty, is a whole system in itself. I'm going to be sure to link it just in case anybody is interested in it. But again, it's not my idea to necessarily sell you guys on anything versus just give you ideas of what you may have already. Um, if you're looking for something to buy, then maybe some ideas about that as well. Or maybe just size ideas because this is five and a half by two and a half. It is very compact. And I do mean very compact. So I'm going to put mission go pure pigment only only the pure pigment set is going to go into it and i'm gonna give it time to dry down and then it's more than likely going to go into pull that out of there for now they said no can i get both of those in there let me see i don't think this book is gonna fit oh it might well let's see and can I get this in here with it? Maybe I'm asking too much. Let's see. Oh, no. It's going. I'm going to turn anything up. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's try the back. Let's try doing it here. I think... Yeah, no, it's not going to fit. I don't want to stretch or tear anything up, but it would have been nice if it did. So I'm probably going to slide it in here like so. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Oh, yeah, that's going to be nice. I like that. That's going to fit in really well. And maybe I'll find another small sketchbook to go inside the little kits and I'll still put the bigger sketchbooks inside the actual travel bag because I do have a couple of other smaller sketchbooks like this one. I still haven't filled it all the way up. This is way um, I made this long, long time ago when I started making sketchbooks, but see, it fits in there, zips up, snap kit. So there you have it, guys. There are some ideas about kits. And then I will put the kit into my travel bag along with, oh, along with the um, sketchbooks I'm going to take. And there I have it. And that's one of those little clear see-through bags. So it is kind of waterproof. It's too big to put on camera, but I will take pictures of it and show it to you at the end of this clip. So hopefully guys, you picked up on some things throughout this video um, that you found is a helpful little idea or tip towards helping you put together a travel kit or a travel bag or both if that's what you choose to do. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, please. I would really, really appreciate it. It's gonna help push it in front of other great viewers just like yourself. Um, also, if you don't mind, drop a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. Did you get anything out of it? Do you have any of these products? If not, did you see anything that interests you? Did you pick up on an idea from the size of anything? You know, I would love to know what you think. Share the video. Sharing is caring and another great way to get it passed on to other great viewers like yourself. You can hit up the video description for any of the relevant links. Um, 
Be sure to subscribe if you're new or if you're returning and you haven't hit the notification bell. And join me back here on Wednesday for some more content that I hope you're going to enjoy. Until then, remember, as I tell you at the end of every video, just keep creating.